So it's time. Time for me to make myself look like a complete fool while guessing which of these 20 drivers is best at driving around some funny shaped circles. Plus, this year, it's not only me having a go, as my dog Enzo has also had his say, as in the last video he made his predictions for the 2024 season. I'll link that one down below, but for now at least, it's time for me to have a go, most likely being as accurate as a Stormtrooper's aim, as I make my predictions for the 2024 Formula 1 season. In last place, P20, the driver that is probably better off spending their Sundays lying in bed, Kevin Magnussen. In a Haas team that's looking as promising as a cat trying to rollerblade, the prospects don't look great. And for me, Kevin is the worst of two drivers, so slots into P20. P19, and someone that quite honestly I do kind of forget is driving half the time, Zhou Guan Yu. Driving for the new sometimes steak, sometimes kick, sometimes sauber F1 team, Chinese driver Zhou will be in his third season, having previously finished 18th and then 18th. So finishing down in 19th this time around, not too much of a stretch. Especially driving in a green highlighter pen with some wheels strapped on the sides. Next in P18, Nico Hülkenberg. With Haas looking like they could be the slowest thing since Internet Explorer, P18 could even be a stretch. However, based on his performance last year, I could see Hülkenberg being in the right place to pick up just enough points. And so for Nico, he's an 18th. 17th place, and it's the only man to give Nick DeVries a run for his money, Logan Sargent. Flying the flag for America, or at least trying to, as he'll be entering his second season with Williams. Now 2023 wasn't great, finishing 21st with just a single point to his name and having more crashes than a crypto market, you'd be wondering how he's this high up. Quite frankly, it's hard to be worse than Haas, meaning that Logan slots in ahead of those two, plus Joe for good measure, P17. Next up, the mullet man himself, Valtteri Bottas. Bleach Blonde may be the look for 2024, but sadly it's not doing him any favours, at least on track that is. However, compared to Joe, everything suggests that of the two, he'll be the one to finish higher. And in 2024, I can't see any major reason why that would change. 15th place goes to Alex Albon. Both 2022 and 2023 were solid years for Alex. Admittedly, it's not hard to look good when paired with Nicholas Latifi and then Logan Sargent, but still got to perform. Sadly, in 2024, I don't think there's going to be a massive step forward for Williams, especially considering the closer partnership between the old AlphaTauri and Red Bull. Speaking of which, Alex has been linked to both Red Bull and Mercedes for seats in 2025, but would a P15 performance for the season be enough to earn him that promotion? 14th place, and it's the Japanese swearing machine, Yuki Tsunoda. In 2023, it looked like he was taking a step forward. Then Nick DeVries left, and the car performance dropped off, and he looked like he was back to normal. Which, don't get me wrong, wasn't awful, but just not enough to really elevate him up the order. However, with an improved car, I do think that RB in general could be much higher up the pack this year. P13, back to back, RB with Daniel Ricciardo after returning, then not returning, then returning again in 2023. He now gets a full year in the RB car to show he's still got it, that's provided Red Bull don't fancy dropping Sergio Perez just a few races in, while the car could possibly be in a bit of no man's land between the back markers and the top teams, I do think that over the course of a season, Ricciardo will come out on top of Sonoda, and therefore he slots into 13th, one place ahead. P12 now, and it's Esteban Ocon, the first member of Team Croissant to feature in these predictions. Ultimately, for Alpine, they may as well be renamed to Team Meh, as when it comes to pretty much everything, well, they're kind of meh. Middle of the pack and middle of the road, above the back markers but behind the front runners, and with not much movement in either direction, it's P12 for Esteban Ocon. On to P11, and can you hear that? There's there's something something getting louder. That is cash. Oh, that team with that is cash. Ah yes, the one, the only, Lance Stroll. Up against one of the most notorious teammate destroyers, it's no real surprise that 2023 wasn't that great. And for 2024, not much better. 
as with the likes of McLaren at the front as well, I don't think Aston Martin will have the same advantage that they had early on last year. Plus, Lance is most definitely not the type of driver that's going to outperform his car. There's more likely to be an F1 snow race before that happens. P10 and it's the baguette to Ocon's croissant, Pierre Gasly. Between the two French drivers, I'd say Gasly is more likely to reach the higher levels, and if one of them were to pick off Lance, Pierre is the one. He is the one. On to ninth, and it's the newly promoted future of Mercedes, George Russell. With Lewis set to leave the team at the end of the year, George could really do with a good season to fill Mercedes with confidence. Sadly, his tendency to crash into walls, barriers, and things named Max Verstappen will hold him back. There will be some highs for sure, but with the grid generally closing in around him, I think that some others will just do a bit better. And to be fair, P9 is only one place lower down than last year when he finished in 8th. Top 8 now, and it's the only good rookie from last year, Oscar Piastri. Highlights included podium finishes along with a sprint race win in Qatar, lowlights included finishing 108 points behind teammate Norris. So while yes, I think he'll do well, I think he's got a bit of a way to go to really close up that gap in performance to Lando. And so for now, it's P8. P7 then, and with a bit of a downgrade from last year, it's Fernando Alonso, as I reckon that his El Plan 2.0 falls dead after a second season. As with the teams above continuing to improve, I just doubt that Aston Martin will be able to keep up. However, even with what I reckon will be the fifth fastest car, I wouldn't be surprised at Fernando dragging himself up the order just a little. On to sixth, and cementing a poor year for Mercedes in general, it's Lewis Hamilton. You know things aren't going too well when your number one driver, seven-time world champ, can only manage sixth. But with Mercedes effectively starting their car development again after two years on the wrong path, I just can't see it being too great, especially with McLaren, Ferrari and Red Bull obviously all looking quick. And so for his final year at Mercedes, not quite what Lewis would be hoping for. Top 5 time now, and from one driver leaving at the end of the year to another, Carlos Sainz. Ferrari had a strong finish to 2023, and with Fred Vasseur getting the team pointed in the right direction, I can see that trend continuing into 2024. However, for Sainz, I most definitely think he'll suffer from whatever the opposite of preferential treatment is. Anti-preferential? Dispreferred? I don't know, English language was never my strong point. But anyway, for me, it's P5 for Carlos Sainz. Into the top four, and it's the highest ever season finish for Lando Norris. As an impressive second half of 2023 continues into 2024, and this year I wouldn't be too surprised if Lando does finally get his first win. Then again, I feel like I've been saying that for a good few years now. Ultimately for Lando in 2024, I think it's probably summarised by saying it's going to be an improvement, but not quite into the top three. Podium places next, and there's really only one of two people that could fill this spot, Charles Leclerc and Sergio Perez. And in 2024, it's Sergio Perez. I can honestly see this year being quite similar to 2022. Most wins for Verstappen, a few for some others, and a few for Perez too. Enough to keep him close to the top, but a slightly closer field than 2023 means he doesn't get that second place, especially considering that he didn't convincingly get it last year either. Second place then, and I'm going for a shock, of Max Verstappen. Just kidding. You didn't really think I was going to put him here, did you? No, instead, it's Charles Leclerc for the second time in three years. Ferrari have looked better, and I do think they're going to be a better challenge than Mercedes and McLaren to Red Bull in 2024, but still, Max is Max, and so it's Leclerc P2. Which, of course, in first place, leaves Max Verstappen. This may be the easiest prediction I've ever had to make. You just don't go from the most dominant season ever to finishing second or lower, especially with no real regulation changes. And so that rounds out my predictions. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to give it a thumbs up and get yourself subscribed to the channel. Check out some other videos that have been out so far. And until next time, take care.